everybody. <laughs> and it's bad. And we are back with TRX vs. Common Game. The series that will decide the number one team here in LCK for the summer split regular split or maybe the round one. This was the most hyped matchup of the week or maybe even the round one. What's your take on the draft? DRX, they had a very unconventional pump. They don't have man many damage. They are focusing on the utility. Because Senna doesn't really do a lot of damage as a high parry carry champion. It's more about the consistent damage output. And it's really amazing to see that DRX was able to kind of pull it off with this kind of unorthodox comp. Now on gaming, they were able to show their prowess with skirmish and team fights, which is really a good pick that connects really well with their color of a team. And as Pawn just said, it's really hard to get the um, cleanest output of a team fight on the side of DRX because they don't have a lot of burst damage, but somehow, some way, DRX was able to get the result they wanted to get. Both teams managed to show and display the strengths of each team, but in the end, DRX was the lucky side to get the nexus of the opponent. As the analyst mentioned, DRX, their comp was really not as strong during the team fights and Dalman Gaming. Their performance during team fights was really on point. At first, Burl finds Karma and Rek'Sai with his ult. Two people was going golden, and then they engage with the Bard Q, and then Silas does a huge amount of AoE damage, and then Lee goes in for a kick. And the best situation for Dalman Gaming is that popping Karma in the beginning of the team fight, and they were able to find her in the beginning of this dragon fight. They got rid of Karma, so DRX lost their power of sustainability of team fights. So that was the point where Dalman Gaming started to stretch out their gold lead. Indeed, this game was in favor of Dalman Gaming. However, as DRX picked up Lucian in the jungle, they were able to turn the flow of the game around with Sparrow Shrine. Look at the goal difference here. It was around 6k goal. Maybe Dalman Gaming, they could just trade Baron with Dragon and they could just go slow. If Daman actually just went for the dragon and then looked for a later team fight, this could be a very easy win for Daman Gaming, but they were a little bit rushing and ended up giving the bad result for Daman Gaming. Players doesn't really calculate all the um, gold lane mathematically in every point of the game, so they were mostly following their instincts, so maybe the players were a little bit rushing and contested for a fight before Baron Shry. At the end of this fight, the gold gap was actually reached really well by DRX. Daman Gaming, they do have a really a fantastic <laughs> performance for a team fight, and their mechanics of prowess is really on point, but they also have to learn how to control. They're eager to fight and focus on the macro. DRX is a team that can make a very sharp rotation and make and also macro decisions so Dalman Gaming has to keep that in mind. It's time to check out the player of the game on the side of DRX. <laughs> Toby with a fantastic performance and twisted fate. Usually, a zero that players are picking up the POG in this stage. With this first Destiny Gate attempt was really fantastic, and also 
Toby was not having a previous game all throughout the game, but in the end, in the later phases of the game, he was able to turn the tide around for DRX, especially this was a turning point for DRX. Lucian could have just gone for base, but that was a little bit of an unlucky moment for Kenyan. It's really actually hard to kind of guess why Kenyon was staying in that brush for so long instead of going back to his base. <laughs> he was rather standing outside of the brush, giving the, all the information that he's pondering around the jungle. The unanimous vote going over to Chilby. Um, but even though they showcased their incredible performance all throughout the game, Chobi was able to turn the game around for DRX. This was a very entertaining game for all the LCT fans, so let's move on to game number two. Thank you very much, Jason, for the analyst desk translation as per usual. And uh, Valdez, what a weird game. I feel like the drafts were strange. Yeah. I feel like the gameplay was strange. Up until a point, right? It looked like Darwin were just winning. And then they weren't. In the wise words of Skara, they were winning the game until they lost. Yeah. Well said, well said. It's I think an uh, ageless quote, I think that one. Yeah, Canyon is gonna have to reset his his mind. Looks like he's uh, currently in reset mode. Uh, hopefully we'll restart a little bit cleaner. He got caught out there. Didn't have the most impactful game this time on Lee Sin. You can see the difference between a Lee Sin against a weak team and a, yeah. a, uh, a Lee Sin against a team with strength, if you will. And uh, DRX definitely were able to hold him down for the majority of it. He only got one decently good kick. And that was Damon's main thing. Once they got behind and they were lacking range and the Baron push was coming in, they were like, well, how do we engage onto this? We can't. Yeah. We're, we're too far behind. From ahead, they looked okay. And they were shutting down a lot of the damage, and they were assassinating guys like the Karma and the TF and the backline, the Senna. But the second the script was flipped by DRX, they immediately looked much stronger. So I'm curious to see how the pick ban is going to go again. I think when two strong teams go up against each other, it's always really interesting to see how the draft meta changes over the course of yeah. the best of three. Usually it's better in a best of five, of course, but we'll have to uh, be satisfied with the best of three for now until we get to playoffs as two champions that were in last game are no longer available. Yep, not happening this time around. And in fact, each team, the team that played it, are going to ban it. So respecting themselves just a little bit here. Ezreal once again is uh, going to be banned away as the Varus. Uh, pretty staple ban. Once again, going to be taken away by DRX. They just don't want to play it. They banned it on blue side last time, red time, red side this time. It's not wanting to deal with that one. Yeah, and TF is just so annoying. I oh, mean, yeah. he, he offers so much. I love the build that Toby went for too. He was always consistently farming, and by the end of it, he had the rapid fire, and he had the wit's end. So he was actually just throwing out so many cards, it was ridiculous the amount of damage he was actually doing in the super late game, which is why I said that Dumb one had to end it before it got there. But unfortunately, one baseball throw happened, and then they got too far behind. But here, the Senna is also going to be taken off the board, so I think we're going to see a very different kind of draft for game two. Jace as well, they are really respecting Nuggery's Jace as Karma is available. Mm -hmm. We've got Brad there as well if they'd like to pick it. I'd expect Callista to be taken away by Dom Juan. I think Nuggery was saying Karma? Mm -hmm. I, I, Karma or Callista would make sense. No? But okay. Folly Bear Never is mind. going to be picked. Never mind. <laughs> the exact opposite of uh, what we were thinking with the Karma. This is very interesting. Um, Karma Olaf, what do you reckon? I, I think that Karma will be picked. For Doran again is my expectation. Maybe they go for jungle on top of that. I think Doran actually had a very impressive game on the Karma, so I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't picked. But all right, there we go. Felios to be locked in. And Felios Karma does have some synergy there. See what the rest of DRX's comp is going to look like. Because already, Volibear has a lot of backline dive with his ultimate. 
So it could be a dangerous position to be picking the Aphelios. And maybe a Thresh pick has to come in straight away, just to make sure that that reposition is an option here for Deft. But our Karma, just a little bit too bad. Oh. Uh? oh, God. What? Okay. Oh, no. Well, we've even seen Bola Bears do pretty well into the Trundle. We were calling this yesterday the Trapdle. Yeah. Especially it's... because he gets picked so often yeah. <laughs> at R2, you know, the red side second pick. And generally it's blind. I mean, in this case, you kind of know what you're going up against. Of course, the Bola Bear can be flexed, but I would expect Cannon to be picking that up. There's Barrel's Pantheon. Pantheon. I think Sounds so. Sounds real dangerous. But actually, Ghost could play a whole host of different things here alongside the Pantheon if we would like to. Even an MF would be half bad, especially with the amount of AoE that they're already demonstrating. Let's see what Showmaker is going to lock away here. Might even just leave AD Carry until uh, the next round. Lock Showmaker away, something that he really would like to pick, and the Zoe is going to come in, always in the back of your mind when Chovy and Showmaker are playing. Wasn't actually touched at all in the first game, as uh, now Carrier back on Braum duty. This time it's not as much of a worrying pick, but DRX don't really have much of an identity with this comp just yet, especially if this Braum is going to be locked in, which does hold some cards pretty close to their chest. Yeah, it's a pick that you see pretty often against Zoe. You can kind of just jump right in front, take the trouble bubble, put up your wall, and you're going to keep a lot of that poke away. Um, obviously, you can have a nice amount of disengage against what Domino already have and the Pantheon and the Bola Bear. It's not too often picked alongside of the Aphelios, but I don't mind it in this position just based on what they're seeing already. But as you mentioned, their, their comp doesn't really have an identity just yet for the side of DRX. Um, Certainly, you have some defensive capabilities in the Trundle and the Braum already, but we'll have to see how they flesh it out here. And they're giving credit to the Polar Bear actually not going into the jungle. They're going to take away the Nidalee, who is a very uh, common pick against Trundle. Yeah, the Nidalee ban is interesting. I would be expecting Canyon to play the Volley Bear. But just wanting to make sure that they're not doing any weird shenanigans where they flex that uh, volley bear towards the top side. Nogari, of course, he's been playing a fair bit of it in solo queue, so no worries there. And Derek's going to take away the karma themselves. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, they, they could have just picked it up on R5, but I suppose they are not going to. Or R4, rather. You want to take that before Damon get their hands on it. Last band to come in here from Dama. We'll see whether they continue down the Chovy route. Getting rid of more of his champions, and Oriana will be taken away, which is going to certainly suggest exactly that. It does have a lot of options, though. Chovy can head towards something like a Syndra if he would like to. Can fall a bit susceptible to the Zoe. The cannon being considered. He's going for a comfortable top lane pick here for Doran. Which is very interesting. They already know what the mid laner is. You can counter pick it here, and then also wait until you see Domlin's entire composition and then take your top laner. But I guess they really wanted to deny Kennen at the same time. It's a very strange place to pick that up. I think denying it from Nogri does make a little bit of sense. Uh, the Callista that we were thinking about does come in. It's so surprised. Oh no, it's going to be Ash huh. instead. Has worked out quite well into a Felios. You, you get some really fun stuff happening in the bottom lane when you got Ash and Pantheon. Will we see Vladimir return? Whoa, these are the two Vladimir players, the aficionados in Nogari and Showmaker. But instead, oh. it's looking like the Volley Bear's heading towards the top lane. With the Lee Sin being looked at. And now DRX knows that it's going to be Pikachu versus the little bear up towards the top side. What's the what's the bear Pokemon? Uh, Teddy Ursa, Ursa Ring, Ursa Ring. Yeah, probably the closest to a to a bear. There we go. Silas and it's again. getting Silas here from Chovy. I don't, I don't know why Silas is, has gone up so much in priority. I can understand it into certain. I mean, there are a lot laners. of sick ultimates here on the side of Dom One that uh, Chovy True. can steal away. But it's like, it al it almost feels like knockoff version 
of some of those other, you know, members on their side. Obviously, you can go straight into the comp with the cannon and try to dive, but at the same time, you've got the Aphelios who would like some protecting, uh, pr you know, protection against some of that pick and poke that Dom1 do have on their side already. Very, um, I feel like Dom1's composition has a little bit more of an identity behind it. It is a, a bit of a mix-up between the poke that the Ash and the Zoe bring and the hard engage that the Volibear Bear and the, the Sin can alongside of the Pantheon, but they have an immense amount of pick potential. Yeah, it's, this, it's pick, this poke, and then hard engage after you've softened up the opponents. You know, pretty standard stuff, but certainly something that Darmon have showed a lot of prowess in. Looking forward to seeing how it works, whereas a little bit more front to back on the side of DRX. And I don't mind the cannon as a defensive choice, weirdly enough. Because you stand next to Deft and press Slicing Maelstrom, and then you have Pantheons and Volley Bears diving on top of the Nefelios, getting stunned and getting softened up so that Deft can finish them off. Yeah. It's something that can work, as Chovy can be darting around the fight as well. Looking forward to seeing what he's going to prioritize as far as these ultimates, because Ash Arrows can be so important and do so much damage when Silas throws them out when he's got a few items. Yeah, I, I think that's important, uh, talking about the Slicing Maelstrom as you did as defensive, because I think the Lee Sin, part of the reason why he came out here again is we've been seeing a lot of Lee Sin into Kennen. He tries to come and you just kick him out immediately. Yeah, right, right. It's, it's really difficult to force yourself into a backline. Of course, you can get a little bit of that initial damage, but a lot of the damage on that ultimate now is in the, in the back side of it. So if you, as the Lee Sin, your one job is to shut down the Kennen engage, that's a pretty important job, and you're actually doing a nice amount for your team if you can let the rest of your team do the, you know, the damage and the <laughs> the rest of the jobs, I suppose. Well, nothing really much going to happen here at level one. See whether any deep wards are going to come Maybe in. A very defensive ward in the river here for DRX, but otherwise not too much. A showmaker does get one towards that Raptor camp, but you can see DRX know exactly where it is. Having a look at the runes. I don't see too many, uh, too many weird ones. Pretty standard. Deft still going towards Conqueror. Despite the nerfs. Seen a few people uh, go with Press the Attack instead. Kyoshi yeah. going for the Press the Attack himself. No phase rush this time or anything like that. Wants to make sure that he can skirmish as effectively as possible. The Showmaker, it's now his turn to have the range advantage in the mid lane. Chovy very comfortably takes those minions. That was very satisfying, as that abduct uh, probably should have landed. In my opinion? Yeah. It only touched her hair, I guess. That was about all it seemed to hit. Yep. It's not easy for Silas in these matchups, but you do have a decent amount of sustain with the fleet footwork, as you were talking about before. And he did go biscuits as well. So it's a similar rune setup to what we saw Showmaker playing in game number one. Very excited to see Barrel again on to another one of his uh, picks that he has been playing so much nowadays. The Pantheon and the Bard have yeah. been the two big ones. He had an excellent game one. He set up so many plays and escapes and attack paths for his team. And I think he will do similarly here on the Pantheon. Looking forward to it. Currently 4-0 and zero on the pick. Pretty high KDA as well. As a... Uh... We'll see whether his first loss is going to come in today, or whether it's going to be a victory. You can see Canyon coming in for a bit of a uh, bit of an invade. It looks like Yoshik wants nothing to do with it. Understands that his priority is well and truly in favor of Damwon. Knows that he can't do anything about it. Chovy has to give up a cannon minion, as uh, Showmaker Zoe is just so oppressive. Yeah, Zoe has a, a pretty nice attack range. So against melee. Champions in the mid lane, you're just always getting in their face. You take the area, you're picking up items. There's so many things you can throw at that melee mid laner, and it's uh, it's really difficult. So because of that loss of mid priority, Yoshik's like, well, I'm just gonna sit back here and thought maybe he was gonna go for a little gank up here, especially after being denied his Raptors. That would be a, a nice way to try to come back on the XP that he lost, but. Instead, he's just going to put down the ward and go down to his bottom side and start clearing from there. Yeah, and already you can see Beryl has exited the lane, as he does like to do. 
Yeah, that finds a bit of damage onto Deft as well, as Winter's Bite's gonna go wide. A weird 2v2, Cussed Blows can be pretty dangerous against the uh, Pantheon. But we'll see whether DRX are going to be able to survive as Gershon comes down, not gonna be able to get the smite. And he's been successfully double scuttled by Canyon. Yeah. Canyon is definitely having a really fun time here in the jungle. And again, it is uh, mainly because of this priority that does come in from the mid lane. Got a bit of a fight down here. Yeah, bottom side actually working out here as well as Beryl does a hell of a lot of work. Death down to 200. Pyoshik not in any position to help this one. Look at Canyon. Oh my goodness, lying in wait. We'll have Beryl coming up, but it'll be spotted on this control ward. Yoshik, not gonna get oh. hit by that Q. <laughs> Immediate reaction, actually really like that. The Gromp is gonna be taken, level four claimed by Yoshik. Now we've got a bit of a flamethrower here. And uh, Ghost is pretty low, actually. Canyon's just not leaving this jungle. <laughs> He's like, everything is mine. Is he really gonna win for that fight? Is gonna come in. Flash has to come out as maybe they've caught on to Chovy, but the value of this Braum is so high. First Blood goes over to Chovy on his Silas. That's gonna save him so much as finally Showmaker's gonna be able to grab a kill, but I think it's, it's the sacrifice of his life. He's trying to get out, grabs another Flash, and I actually think that that's it. Showmaker's gonna be able to make it to safety. So two for one in favor of DRX, but Showmaker somehow escapes. And the whole reason that all started is because Cannon desperately wanted to pick up, like, 10 gold on the little wolf in their barrels here, and they're saying, okay, yeah, we can try to start this. But Cannon gets chunked immediately. Barrel is so far behind enemy lines without Flash to try to set this up. Cannon can't get back in. And then he commits to getting back in, which is, again, another confusing decision. And so Dalmon kind of, you know, dig their own grave on that trade as it did not look very clean. And DRX were just easily there to pick it up, picking up what Damon were putting down. Yeah, the brawn value, as we were talking about, very, very high there as well. Concussive Blows, one held in ability. Making sure that he can get all of those stuns in these fights. There's Death back in this lane. Still behind by a little bit. Ash's volley, pretty frustrating as uh, Gravitim. Gonna do some work. The better Ash, 3-6, of course, is uh, the Apelios. And Ocean Drake is going to be taken here by Canyon. Two exciting Drakes to come in, though, as Mountain or Infernal will be our souls this game. As we do have Cloud coming up as our second one. Yeah. Uh, right after the very aggressive play from Canyon in game one, he immediately goes straight at the Drake, and Yoshik is nowhere to be found. Again, this bottom lane really annoying to deal with for DRX because of that Ash priority. Even a little bit of poke coming out of Barrel is, is also a bit annoying. So, definitely having a good time down here at Dalmon. They use that priority to pick up the Drake. Top lane has been kind of, you know, it's of course going to be favored towards the Kennen. Doran didn't pick up a color or anything like that. He's not going ultra. They're going to engage. That arrow is going to come down. Ignite onto Death, who flashes away immediately. Gets a bit of damage back, has his Severum in case anyone tries to dive, but Showmaker's gonna come in here looking for more. DRX is just gonna back the heck away from this lane, and oh no, Pyoshik probably pretty unfortunate timing here. Silas is still in the mid lane, Ignite to go down, Bubble's gonna land. As, uh, yeah, Pyoshik, Pyoshik's just dead, I don't know why he was sticking around. Death trying to get some damage in here. Onslaught doing some work, but not quite enough as Chovy gets on in. Beryl gonna find the Silas Carrier, moving on over as well. The Lee Sin throws his life away, but maybe it's in the benefit of his team, and it is. Cue the Yakety Sacks, Valdez. <laughs> this game is going to hell in a handbasket. Oh man, that was pretty insane the way that all started off. I'm not sure why Chovy was so late to the fight. He must have been cleaning up a really big wave that Showmaker got in there. As here comes Nuggery. Yep, Slicing Maelstrom is going to be the answer here. Doran trying to avoid the damage. He has Flash. Looking to stack up these Marks of the Storm and Lightning Rush is going to get him to safety. So, Nuggery pressed a lot of buttons. He's a big old bear, but uh, Pikachu's going to be fine. Yeah, uh, Cannon's never really going to, you know, be in too much danger of getting burst down by the Vola Bear 100 to 0 by any means, but this does mean that Nuggery does get lane priority and can begin to push in without too much of a care. So there's a little bit of damage that little Pikachu is doing up there. Barrel now is in the top lane. 
Of course he is. Of course, you know, this is where he belongs. We do have <laughs> Shelly here. Canyon misses a stationary target with his Q. Maybe saying a little bit about you know, how this series has gone so far. Yeah, honestly, you know, I, I don't want to judge him based off of just that Q, but, like, he hasn't been having the cleanest series. He looked great the last time around against Freaka, but this time around it is not necessarily the same jungler that we did see in that one. I, I want to break down the Akity sacks we had in that last fight. I want to see that replay. It was so yeah. long, they're probably still cutting it up. And <laughs> yeah, probably. Trying to uh, deliver it to us. Well, maybe we just don't want to watch it again. Uh, maybe that's how it's going to Yeah, be. I think once is enough. But here we go. Replay comes in. Carry is low, depth is low. you got to remember the trade that happened before. So, Yoshi can't be here. He has to expect that Canyon is in the jungle. And Tovi's super late. Again, I assume he's cleaning out a wave, so he can't really be here to try to help. So he comes in. He can trade 1v1. Oh, he the does get the one kill. The instant hijack kick was actually so cool yeah. out of Chovy. But at the end of the day, he's also beating back in Caria and giving away a couple of kills just for one. So I think you may just have to accept the dead trundle and then back away. But instead, it ended up being like a three for one or a three for two in favor of Dom one. And you're, you're getting Showmaker ahead on Zoe. We've talked about the two mid laners and their Zoe's. That is the one thing you don't want to do oh, in 100. this game right now. Well, Caitlyn Cogmore, as our friend LS would say, has been equipped here by Def, so <laughs> scary guns to go up against. Oh, Barrel. Oh, there's the face check. It's not what you want, but that uh, Q's going to miss out a carrier. Barrel's going to be absolutely fine. Still has the E, I believe, to keep himself alive, and Def misses yet another Q as well from his Calibrum. And the Feral is going to be pretty healthy, pushing this wave towards the outer turret bottom lane. Oh, Chovy. Okay. Just absconds his way out. I thought maybe Canyon would drop the Rift Herald down here, but maybe he wants to wait for Cloud Drake. Uh, I'm not sure if you really need to get this Bola Bear too fed. I mean, he's kind of just be sitting there as another engage. Yep, Kyoshi. Perry's going to land that with his bite, throws down the ult. He is now Barrel trying to mitigate some of this damage. And the AoE is just huge coming out from Dom on Kyoshik having to leave. Carrier has to flash and Chovy off to the side. Picks himself up a oh, man drop and we'll see whether he does come in with it. But Deft is just taken down. Ghost is going to be able to lock that one up and Kyoshik's going to flash. But I have a feeling that this burn damage is going to be enough. <laughs> one last tick. No. Down to uh, about 10 health before being able to get out of there. Not bad. One more auto would have done the trick. I think Showmaker had a stolen flash or something, but he, he didn't commit to going all the way and trying to pick up that kill. He was able to get out of range, but another great trade there in the jungle. Even though Ghost missed his, his ult, and it was, uh, again, very scuffy. You know, it wasn't like a clean engage. That uh, is okay, Chovy. Just going to use that to have some map presence and a global to get down to the bottom lane so that Ash doesn't get any plates. Probably worth it. But some farm in the mid lane goes wanting. Death needs to get over there and pick that one up. That one definitely off to a bit of a better start here. I think it's more effective of a comp as well. I think their draft yeah. this time around is uh, definitely <laughs> more effective as the game goes along compared to their you know zero range comp that they had in the last game, basically. It was like a trade of pretty uh, questionable compositions on both sides, actually, uh, last time. This time, I think DRX are once again very happy to scale. But Darmon at the moment are creating the chaos that they want. Their mid game is so strong, especially with uh, Shoemaker on in Zoe. Yeah. You can see that it's Barrel once again baiting them into a fight, and DRX are biting the bait every single time. Shoemaker even misses a, a huge paddle star that doesn't immediately pick up Pioshik and Karia. He's not able to follow up there, and he's so desperately trying to look for a kill, but at the end of the day, he only gets one assist. So, yeah, Zoe is uh, not doing very well in that fight, at least, but... The other ones, certainly not too bad, as Rift Herald is going to come down in this mid lane, looking for a few of these plates. Showmaker going to get even further ahead. By the way, definitely not something, if you're a DRX fan, that you're excited about. If you're a Damwon fan, get ready for the montage going to be very, very strong and very difficult to deal with. His Deft is behind 20 CS. Surprisingly enough, this Ash pick certainly working out here for Damwon. Yeah. Remember, they were considering the Callista. Um, that is definitely something that would have 
you know, on paper, maybe had more synergy in terms of, you know, hard engage at the Pantheon. You throw him in, you throw him in again, he stuns, he blocks, right? But the Ash, in terms of lane presence, is just doing much better, and it, it does look like the better pick uh, in this game. So definitely pretty happy with their selection to go for that one. The game has slowed down a little bit after that last engage. Uh, we're just waiting. Okay. Okay. Well. Arrow right underneath the turret. There's, Hello. There's the man drop. Immediate <laughs> exhaust onto Beryl. As Deft is wondering what he's actually supposed to do here. As Carrier does do a fair bit of damage. Deft with his Severum trying to get the work done. Should be oh. able to get it. As the flash forward. Beryl. One versus two. Takes down the Aphelios. And now Chovy oh. misses the arrow. Oh. Misses the abduct. I want out of here, Valdez. This is not, <laughs> it's not what I signed up for. As now he's just getting kited. Oh. He did not want to hit that one, Chovy, as ghost. he flashes in. Oh, no, ghost. dear. <laughs> That's a yikesy play as Dora now gets a flashback underneath his turret, but Kenya's still going to be able to put him down. Goshik up here, one versus two now, has himself a turret, oh, but he's man. still going to go down, and Darmwan are going to win this game. It is just play after play after play. We don't talk very often about ghosts here on Dom One's team, but he just made Jovi look silly oh, in that man. exchange down in the bottom lane. And also, don't forget about Beryl, who started it up, essentially went in 1v2. I mean, Ghost did one volley and an arrow, and that was it. And the rest of it was level seven Beryl up against Denton Carrier, and he wins the 1v2. This game has fallen apart for DRX. <laughs> Dalmon are just so aggressive and proactive in that blue side jungle. They have won every single fight that has come to them there. And you can see the setup, they're calling for it. Just a little bit of poke damage from Ghost. He can't exactly walk past because they see Jovi coming down and it eventually just ends up it's only Beryl. So Ghost has to abandon him. And Beryl's like, well, it's I like don't, you know, I don't My need shield's you. better than yours, basically. <laughs> yeah. Talking to Carrier there. And uh oh. I assume he did die eventually. I don't see him on the map. But here's this play up in the top side. Cannon, really nice kick. He's able to land the Q follow-up and full of air is so hard to kill. Um Toshik, you know, you can subjugate, you can do a bit of damage, but this is the trade that, uh, that was cool. most interesting for me. Oh, yeah, Tarata, Tarata, top it. Dodges everything. He's like, I'm alive, I'm alive. Yeah, drop the attack again. Yeah, Tarata. Yeah, nice. Oh, did he touch you? Well, that's, uh,. Well, okay, so what he said was like, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, how dare you try to kill me? He's up like two levels on Ghost, or one level at least at the time. Just nutty. Well, as the dust settles, it is a big lead for Dom One, sitting at about 5,000 in the head, in the in the lead. And uh, now looking for Soul Point, this Infernal Soul as well. Zoe's just playing Gatekeeper. Nogri's going to eat himself a Gromp. And head back towards this top side. I have a feeling this one is uh, going the distance, Valdez. It's going to be very, very tough to uh, for DRX to work another one of their miracles in this particular game. All right, in goes Chovy, looking for Ghost here, wanting to get some revenge. I don't know whether he's going to be able to. This man drops a plenty. And Ghost is now safe. Carrier very, very low as Noggery, trying to flash his way out. Death is doing a lot of damage, but Doran now might be the savior of his team. Two kills for the top laner of DRX. And Showmaker trying to pick up the stragglers will find himself a uh, bubble onto Pyoshik, but he gets into the minion way. Very smart move. And DRX claw it back by a thousand gold. Yeah, it's a good setup there. I mean, we're seeing the power of Silas. You mentioned it in the pick bound. There's so many great engage tools that he can pick up. And he's taken the uh, Pantheon ultimate multiple times in a row. Ghost, I think, is not entirely factoring it in. He was pretty far down the lane. And at the same time, he was able to get out. I mean, he survived, but he kind of baited his team into an awkward spot, and then Doran was really the one who finished it off. So you can see here, he's pushing past even the midway point, so you got to be careful. Horses Canyon over. And things are mostly looking good for Domlin here. The kick was fantastic. Nuggery gets in. He doesn't finish off the kill, and then all of a sudden, Doran says, remember me? <laughs> yeah. 
And that was about that. Everybody was super low. Doran came in to ult at the exact right time with the spread of them. And also, Showmaker shorted his bubble a little bit, unfortunately. He was trying to get it all the way through that wall, but then it was on cooldown for the majority of the fight, which did take out a fair bit of damage. Still, not something that Darmon are really too worried about, because Baron wasn't up. There was no Infernal Drake there. They were basically fighting for nothing, and uh, DRX weren't able to take down an out of turret in the mid lane or anything like that. So we talk about fighting for objectives a lot. That wasn't a fight for an objective. That was a fight because we can. Yeah. The DRX do manage to at least claw back a bit of that gold, so that's good news for them. Doran here patrolling through his own jungle as uh, Nogri is looking to take away the red buff. Carrier is here, and Chovy's going to move on in as well. He does find himself the ultimate there as Nogri now trying to get himself out. Did manage to steal the red, but is he going to be able to make it out with his life? His depth is very long from this fight. Eventually will turn up. But and unable to actually start the battle that they were looking for. Now Chovy could be in trouble. Has to flash to get himself out of this one as Ghost now without the arrow. And Shirley gets a little bit confused on her way down the lane, so isn't going to be able to get too much value on this inner turret. DRX still very, very low. Only really Deft that hasn't suffered a few injuries in the last little while oh. as that bubble was just collected by the cannon. Yeah. Sky even, Strike layered on top is actually yeah. pretty good damage. Even Volibear's got some poke, man. He's he's getting in there. He's a bear, but he can call down the God of Thunder to help him out. And you can see what happens when the Ash and the Zoe get ahead of the relatively low range from the side of DRX. I mean, Aphelios can only do so much. And the amount of poke that they're able to throw out and just... Well, here we go. Uh, in goes Doran, just takes the front door as Beryl survives for so damn long. But Doran is going to go gold, trying to keep himself up. Jovi as well. Oh, oh, but they just lose <laughs> the cannon. They lose the Silas. Now Deft has to flash. The Q was very close from Canyon, but he's still on the chase. As now Showmaker will find his double kill. And Nogari's there as well. This is the dumb one we were expecting to see. This should be the result in a 2-0, right? But... Oh. We'll be going to a game three as Shoemaker picks up yet another one, and he's Hit feeling pops. himself. Man, these uh, Ghosts had a fantastic game here. I don't know if the game is going to end right now. They're going to take Baron. They could probably wait and take the Infernal Soul at the same time. But as you're saying, it's basically over from here. We'll have to see what DRS can do to try to come back. But, man, Ghost is making this Ash kiting look as easy as someone like Ruler. And again, I'll say, I mean, Ghost is not the guy we talk about very often. And he's getting hard engaged on by a cannon right in his face. As you can see, Doran goes straight in for it. This is a great ult. It forces the flash out of Ghost, who also gets stunned. And it's out of the fight. But then, watch him. So he's backing away. And then he just walks up to five people and he's like, oh, yeah. You're not really able to close the gap anymore. Silas doesn't have a gap closer. Ghosty can't do anything. Carry his way in the back. Depth doesn't have the damage. And he just steps up to them and is able to shut it down. Whoa! Depth in a little bit of trouble here. Does have to cleanse the slow coming out from that Q. Absolutely had to do that as the rest of DRX are lying in wait. The Infernal Drake going to be up in 10 seconds time. The Aphelios is absolutely not going to be in the right position, though. As, okay, now they may have found Showmaker looking for Ghosts now as they immediately change their minds. Chovy picks himself up a kick. Will he be able to grab the kill? That Yes, they do manage to take down the Ash, but Dept can't even get to this fight. Doesn't really matter, though. They've won it. Uh, two for one at the moment. As our Showmaker decides to just jump on in to see what's going on, discovers that he doesn't want to do it again. And he's picked up a Super Soaker, the Paddle Star, not going to quite land as DRX... They don't exactly have high health bars. The Deft is very healthy, and there is no Darm 80 carry left on this map. As they really want to deny this uh, Infernal Soul. Teleport to come forward from the Silas. Chovy will be back up to full health. Nogri, the same situation. Showmaker from over the wall doesn't find the trouble bubble. This barrel gets taken down extremely low. The Dragon's actually helping out. A Showmaker gets rid of the Trundle, so there are no smites for this particular fight. Moonlight Vigil goes absolutely wide. Nogri flashes forward. Oh. Triple kill instantly. I thought they nerfed the AOE on the battle star. Nope. It doesn't matter. As Archovy wants to fight Nogri as best he can, but Showmaker's still looming, and Doran going to be blocked off from trying to help out his mid laner. And Arrow sails by majestically. 
as Joby's gonna go golden and then have a bit of a gray screen. No, actually able to survive for the minute as Doran comes in, gets lit on fire, and runs away. This game's super weird, Valdez. Oh, is the, oh, it's the guy's strike <laughs> not gonna quite be enough as thankfully there is an abscond. And okay, here's the Infernal Soul. And there was a lot of fun stuff that happened, but now it's uh, Infernal Soul and a 10,000 gold lead. Yeah. We have 26 kills in 24 minutes. Is this the LCK? Uh, generally, this is not the amount of kills we get as it's all over the place. The teleport flank was a interesting idea by DRX. It ends up kind of working out based on their position. They're so far behind. And to take out the Ash immediately, of course, is going to be great for them. Doran, you know, he is also going to go down, but it's a two for one in favor of DRX. And Depth is having a lot of trouble so far on the Apelios. He really hasn't been able to get much effective damage. He's getting poked out. He's getting zoned out by all the range. And you can see him just in the back. He's like, how am I supposed to do damage against this? Yeah. Another missed Not ult. his ultimate, yeah. It's just uh, nothing he can do. And then they're all grouped <laughs> up. Showmaker's now legendary after that one. And oh, goodness. it's... It's insanity what the Zoe is able to do from so far ahead, especially in the hands of someone like Showmaker. Uh, I, I'm not sure why exactly they let this one go to him, but... Shout out to Chovy for doing so much damage in that last fight, but... Still, the Bear and the Zoe combined, certainly doing a lot of work. As DRX now having to contend with all of this pressure from Darmon. Baron's going to be up in two minutes' time. As Shrinkers have a field day. As the arrow is going to be avoided, Canyon tries to get in there, but not able to find a kick that he really wanted. Doran gets on top of Showmaker. Ghost is going to be missed by that Moonlight Vigil. It's one for one thus far, as the Apelios is at least still alive, <laughs> but he's going to be put to sleep. He's a bit tired as the Sky Strike comes in, almost kills him outright. As now Chovy, he grabbed himself an arrow and he throws it back to its maker going to send goes to the death chamber as well. So Showmaker and Noggery, the last two alive, and oh, this, this game's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dalmon are getting a little bit out of hand with how far they're going. You can see in the span of about three seconds, they're, you know, the lane isn't even really pushing, and already they're able to poke down DRX to like, okay, so watch it here. Like, okay, the lane is coming in, and just through all their poking, they're already able to get two members basically to half out. And then Canyon's like, Leroy Jenkins, okay, I'm going. I hope you guys are going to follow me. And they're under the turret the entire time. It's a really questionable dive. Canyon on the lease in. He gets the one kick, and then he's useless. And Showmaker too low. You can see Ghost here is left out to dry. They just shouldn't have been as deep as they were. And DRX were able to scoop up. A bunch of kills from that play. I feel like what we're doing is we're just buffing Showmaker's KDA. That's what we're doing. Trying to extend this game for as long as possible. It was already really good at, it uh, was. what, like 16.6 .6 or something like that? I mean, coming into today's matches, yeah, 16.9. Uh, so it should be a little bit higher. I think he died uh, more than once for the first time in the last game. So Probably. Uh, that's a big deal. Yeah, on the Silas here. Especially from, well, I mean, they were ahead for the majority of the game, but still. I think he still averages under under one kill a game, which is really silly. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of sweeping going on here for DRX, who have made it out of their base. Nuggery on the bottom side. Wave, I believe, is starting to slow push back towards Darmwon, the top side of the map. This control ward goes into the Baron Pit, and that's where we're fighting over at the moment. Two minutes, and that Elder Drake will be available Dumb one start a fight, it's gonna be so hard for DRX to uh to win it. But I've uh I've experienced some years in my time. And uh, uh here we could go. potentially do something. They need to try and at least survive all of the poke relatively healthy. And Doran has teleport, as does Noggery, but the cannon really wants to be starting off a team fight and not waiting in a side lane as Villa is gonna go up. Ulti comes down, Beryl is actually gonna avoid it, but has to walk back. Into DRX, Depp finds himself a Caitlyn. And uh, Pyoshik is just dead. Ghost has a lot of arrows to come out of that bow when you press your Q button. Now Beryl's going to go back home, has himself the uh, ulti as well, and he should be able to get back here as quickly as he would like. Now we've got Ghost and Canyon just taking down the Baron by themselves. 
Yeah, Feral is going to have to try to get back here. He does have the Grand Sky Fall, so no problem on that. We have huge waves pushing in the top lane and the bottom lane. They're going to have to deal with that as Showmaker is just harassing Jovi through the jungle, who just has to run away with his tail between his legs. Not able to do much. So will just be the free Baron going the way of Domlin after the kill on the jungler. Let's see how they want to go for this. I think they can just kind of push with the Baron, but you can see that Barrel, he's done this all game where he's really just trying to entice the enemy into a fight. It, it looks bad, and again, it, it was, he did get caught out, so technically it was bad, but he ends up able to just barely survive, and his team is able to net a kill because they're so far ahead. I mean, they're 12,000 gold ahead yeah, they are. right now. This and you know, what, you know what they need in order to win this game? No, it's not killing the Four gold. They need an Elder Dragon. <laughs> They're going to need to get the Elder Dragon so they can waltz into the enemy base and call down the dragons to kill their opponents. It's a little bit of an... Oh, uh, I thought they could have maybe collapsed on a Toby there, but... Not going to do what they did in the top lane anymore. I would expect some kind of, you know, like, calm down call over the comms after that last play. You don't want to throw just like game one again. And someone actually going to give DRX another chance at a team fight. As this Elder is, in fact, what they're going to be fighting over. Bubble is going to go wide as Gosha gets chunked to high heaven. <laughs> Exhausted as well. Nice help. Yeah, Kerry is trying to get in there, but Showmaker is going to have another bubble pretty soon. Stand behind, beside me is going to be there for Carrier, so it does get himself over Ooh. that wall, as you can see. But they're getting corralled like cattle right now, Valdez. Yeah. Being told that they're not allowed to be anywhere near this Elder Dragon. And I think it's going down far faster than they think. As Bubble, once again, not going to find the target. Oh, the arrow comes in right as the dragon is falling down. This should be the last team fight as Pyoshik is tanking for quite a long time. Subjugate onto the Volley Bear is very valuable, but not valuable enough, as you can see. As in goes Doran, he's looking to get onto Ghost, but Ghost just walked oh, right past him. He killed and now, yeah, Trovi's in a whole host of trouble. Tromek is going to fall. But the man drop comes in. Barrel, oh, taken down by the Chain Lash. All right, Trovi needs a bit more respect than that, my friend. But it should be that with just one Silas, they're not going to be able to hold on. There's a big angry bear smacking down your house. This inhibitor, at least, is going to go. Another minion wave is taxiing in. They have Ghost still here. Showmaker and Beryl are dead. One versus three. Here for Chovy. Can he defend? Seven seconds on Pyoshik. Nine on Daft as they've taken down the first Nexus turret. Chovy down to about half. Kingslayer does do a lot of work as his Zonyas is in. And now Daft is going to turn up, but they're looking to try and race this one down. And it's going to work out here. So we have an even game. One to one between Dom One and DRX. And in that game, that was an angry looking Dom One. Sometimes the players get tilted after a loss. That was the players getting angry after a loss. Yeah, I, you could see it just in the way they were playing down in the bottom and mid side. Um, Showmaker just styled all over the enemy team, especially on the bottom side of the map. Nugger here on the Volo Barry getting a little extra hug from his coach but it was absolutely the Showmaker show. I do want to shout out Beryl. I thought he had a fantastic game yep. on the Pantheon and of course Ghost for many fun moments on the Ash and his kiting. I thought he had a great mid game. Kind of fell off there in, in some of his decisions. His arrows were just kind of like non-existent towards the later stages of that game, but it's okay because he and his team were already able to carry to a point where they couldn't exactly lose. And I'm not really liking the Silas pick I gotta be honest, I, I'm not really enjoying it. Doesn't have much range. It really struggled into what Domlin already had. The Aphelios was just non-existent. I mean, where was Deft in well, that Well, he actually got left behind by his team so many times. They weren't actually able to fight around it. And you can see exactly why. Because they were using Doran as a diver. They were using Silas as a diver. And then what, you've got Be uh, like Carrier desperately trying to save everyone? And the Aphelios is just by himself, and he eats a paddle star, and he's dead. It has a lot yeah. to do with, you know, the fact that Showmaker just did 37.6 thousand <laughs> damage in 31 minutes, which yeah. is pretty impressive, to say the least. Yeah. It was very close to a perfect game outside of uh, a few kills going over to DRX. So, yeah, it was Whoa. insane. Uh, lane pressure that they had on with the Ash Pantheon and the Zoe roaming and the insane 
amount of range they had to just push them away. So Damwon, great draft. They're able to take that second game. Yep, they are. So let's see whether they can take the last one as we come back from this short break. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to